Well, good afternoon. We're here uh, with another NAS chat, and I'm here with David Smith, and, and we're just going to have a little bit of a conversation together. David, why don't you uh, talk a little bit, uh, t t tell the people um, about your family first. About my family, okay. So, uh, married to Alicia Smith, which the name is at the bottom of the screen for this one because I'm using her account. Huh. And uh, a daughter is Nora. She's born in February and she's three years old now. So very exciting to have that running around the house. <laughs> um, and I uh, grew up in Pennsylvania. Um, it's kind of uh, where my family, where my mother and dad and all of them grew up and there and so on. And then uh, kind of came here whenever my, uh, found out my wife was living around here, so it's just easier to move to Ohio than have us all move to Pennsylvania. That's right, that's right. Well, you went to Mount Vernon too, right? I did, yes. Did you graduate from Mount Vernon? I did, yeah. I started uh, in a university in Pennsylvania called St. Francis University, mm -hmm. and then it was just kind of too much, and uh, the pastor in my, uh, the church that I was attending in Evansburg, Pennsylvania, set, recommended Mount Vernon, because that's where his wife went, so. Who was the pastor? Uh, Brett Metcalf. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know you also attended church with Rob Osborne, who I've, I've known for a long yeah. time as well. Yeah, um, he got there at the tail end of whenever I was leaving. So I unfortunately didn't get to hear him as much as I like, but yeah, he's really cool. He's a funny guy, Rob. Yeah, a funny for sure. Guy. Ha, 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 funny guy. Uh, tell us that Nora's almost, she's a miracle. Nora, tell us oh. about what happened with Nora after she was born. For sure, yeah, it was a uh, it was a scary experience whenever she was first born. Uh, she was just having a hard time breathing, and the doctors came and looked at her and decided and she needed to be taken to the NICU. So we spent about I feel like it was a week and a half there, and she had some sort of focal cord paralysis. Alicia could say the term better than I can, but. It was a, a scary time, and suddenly it just ended up fixing itself. So I uh, definitely felt like God was at work in that, and it was an incredible miracle and blessing that everything worked out really well because that was for sure a very scary time, and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful it all worked out. Yeah, I think we were, they were talking about she wouldn't be able to, to speak or cry, or mm -hmm. and she can definitely speak and cry, right? Oh, for sure, all the time. <laughs> she's a beautiful little girl, and uh, she, she's, she's really full of personality. She's a little bit shy at times, but she's an awesome, awesome yeah. kid. I tell you, I love to see her. Um, and Alicia grew up in Marysville, right? She grew up in North Lewisburg, where she okay. had to, attended Triad there, and then uh, Marysville kind of just seemed to be a nice little uh, location away but from North Lewisburg. Didn't she grow up in the, the um, Assembly Church, Christian Assembly Church across the yes. street? Yes. Yeah, right across the street. That's where she attended since she was uh, born. So yeah, her okay. family still goes there today, too. So she just moved across the street to a different church. Just to, it, was, it wasn't a long relocation, was it? Yeah, for sure. Because I, I, I can't, well, I, whenever I was younger, I grew up in a Presbyterian church until we moved to a Nazarene church and when I was in high school. And then when we started dating and so on, I was like, why don't we, can't we go to the Nazarene church right across the street? And so I finally convinced her to go with me. So I'm very glad we came over to Marysville Naz. It's been, it's been really a lot of fun and get to know some really good people and so on. How many years have you been there? I can't even remember. I know it's probably been like, it was like a year before you got there. Okay. I've been there six years, so seven years or so. Jeez, yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel like it, but. <laughs> wow. So, so you, um, you and Alicia uh, were married when? How long have you guys been married? I've uh, been married, we hit five years, so it'll be six here coming in this May 24th. Six years. So. And, and most people know, but you're, you're district licensed, correct? Yes, correct. How, how long you had your district license? Uh, I know they started the process with me, like, in, I think, 2011. So, almost Eight nine years. years. Nine years, yeah. Oh, man, 2020. And, and for those that don't know, district license means he, David's a Nazarene pastor. Now, there, there's, there's three 
uh, levels of the track, there's a local license, which a local church gives, and there's district license, which the uh, Nazarene Northwest Ohio district gives, and then ordination. And so David's on the track towards ordination. So you went to Mount Vernon. What did you study at Mount Vernon? Uh, I started with uh, pastoral ministry, and then uh, they notified me in my like junior year that I needed to pick a ma minor, too. So I, I had taken a lot of classes in uh, biblical languages, so it happened to be that biblical languages and biblical literature were my two minors there. And oh. so that was a lot. That's where I kind of like grew into loving the language of the Bible, too. So I know you're, you're a big, can I say Greek freak? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I call it a Greek nerd, but you can call it that. <laughs> well, I think there's a Greek freak that plays the NBA. That's, a, that's where that phrase comes. But you're a Greek nerd. You love the original Greek. Can, can you tell me your favorite Greek word to say? Oh, man. It used to, it used to be some sort of uh, like love from the gut, but the word is uh, lost in my mind right now. Uh -huh. Lately, it's been like soon strafo or something like that, which... Which is one of my favorite terms because it's so, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's one of my favorite words because, like, the Apostle Paul seems to just create it out of nothing. And it's, like, such a huge term for our, our uh, understanding of what Paul says because it means crucified with. So, and some translators call it co-crucified, which I like that term a lot, too. So, it's one of my favorite terms right now. <laughs> Did you ever just break into Greek when you're you're talking to Alicia or or Nora just so they you know kind of to, to broaden the horizon anything like that? Uh, sometimes I do, so, but then she pulls out like sign language, and then I am just completely lost. So then, yeah, <laughs> we, Nora. yeah, <laughs> talking in Greek and sign language. So that's <laughs> awesome. Fun. So so you got your um you got your degree at Mount Vernon in pastoral studies and with minor in biblical languages, and and then you went to seminary, correct? That's correct. I uh, went to NTS, Nazarene Theological Seminary. Got my Master of Divinity there. So, yeah. And then I, I, I took a lot more uh, New Testament courses. I loved the New Testament professors there. They were all great. And, uh, yeah, kind of spurred more of my desire to learn the languages a little bit deeper. And it's been a lot of fun. Okay. So when did you end up with your Master's of Divinity? When, when did that occur? How many years uh, Happened whenever Nora was near two. So I think I just finished like last two or one, I think. So a year or two ago, I finished. Now, now I know when you get your master's like that, usually they want you to take a break before mm -hmm. you start looking PhD or, or, or any kind of other doctorate. Are you considering another doctorate? Uh, I'm like basking in this break right now because I can kind of read whatever I want and not being told to read certain things so it, it's been something i'm just basking in right now gonna let god decide if phd work is something i go into or if it's not and i'm fine with either option right now <laughs> okay all right now right now you're you're working at um the at nationwide children's mm -hmm. do you enjoy that oh for sure it, it's a great job it's great to see uh, a lot of the kids there uh, it's great to see uh, a lot of uh, families coming out with, especially like, you know, I see Cohen so many times and they're saying like, this is our last day. So it's like exciting to be able to share that experience with them too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And Alicia's a teacher, right? That's correct. She, yeah, t she teaches uh, a wide age range. I think it's like fifth through eighth or something like that. I'm probably getting that wrong, but she handles special needs kids too. Okay. So. It's did always she, been her passion ever since I knew her. Okay. Did, did she get her degree at Mount Vernon too? She did, yeah. Uh, we met like our sophomore year there. It, what, what's funny is we we decide, we figured out like a year or two after we started dating that she was the first person that greeted me there. So that was pretty cool. It was meant to be. It was <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so so um, l l let's talk about... Um, dreams you know you've got you got a pastoral ministry degree you, you you've got a, a mdiv and so mm -hmm. it, where, where do you think where do you feel god's pulling you now yeah that's a that's a good question uh it, it's definitely something after a uh, seminary i wrestled a lot with uh took some time in uh kind of figuring out where that is and 
doing some Sabbath uh, prayer and Sabbath like readings and just taking, ma making sure I'm taking a break for myself after all the schooling I went through. Yeah. And um, I definitely feel like there's like a, a practical leaning that I'm getting towards right now. Uh, for some know there that I, I roast coffee. And so right now I, that's kind of been my uh, outlet of ministry and uh, a portion of my proceeds are going right now to uh, suicide prevention programs. Wow. So um, that's kind of where I'm starting. I, I'm just kind of seeing where things continue to go from there. And yeah, but I, again, I, I, I love the original language. So that's kind of also where I've been devoting a lot of my time and study into is just continuing to learn about it and starting to pick up like some Hebrew too. So long-term goal is to translate the whole entire Bible for myself, not to like publish my own, you know, translation, but like, it, I just think it would be cool to be able to do that. Okay. So, so right now you're, you're sensing like a, a practical discipleship um, into the word. I mean, David, David has a real love for the word. If, you, if you've never talked to him, he, he just loves to dive in deep and sees Facebook posts. He's interpreting and diving deeper, seeing different things. And, and so you feel God's kind of leaning you right now towards, um, towards practically helping people dive deeper into the word. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And, and I think there's a, uh you know, a life-changing story of, of the Bible. It's just not some off-put, you know, story that happened centuries ago. But I think, especially whenever I'm going through Galatians right now, I, I think uh, Paul's emphasis so much on uh, faith. And I, I connect what Paul is saying in, in terms of faith as participation. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for so many people? And I think that, you know, a lot of high schoolers, middle schoolers, and, and young adults are, are trying to find their place in life and they're trying to, you know, find, you know, what makes them happy. But uh, in, in the root of what the Bible talks about, I find so much, and what Paul talks about is that happiness is uh, found in the Lord, it's found in Christ, and uh, faith is the participation in that, that happiness isn't so much our own desires, it's be desiring the other and letting those desires kind of guide us. And that's where I think we end up finding happiness and, and our participation in that. Uh, that's good. So, so happiness is found in participation, not just in what you receive. And so it's not about just receiving the benefits. It's about participating in the benefits, having a part. Sure. Of that's good. That's really good. That'll preach brother. And I, I may steal that at some point. Um, so, so okay. while you're talking about that, how did you come to a relationship with Jesus? When did you, when did you start following Jesus? Yeah, that was uh, in my early years of high school. So that's why I, I, I have such a passion with high schoolers because I was kind of at a rough place myself. And uh, we just had moved to the uh, Nazarene church from the Presbyterian church. We were just kind of church hopping for a while. And then the pastor there recommended or gave us tickets to a Chris Tomlin and Louis Giglio concert. It was like the How Great Is Our God Tour or something like that. And, uh, you know, it was the first time hearing like Christian worship like that the first time. Uh, sorry, <laughs> reiterated the same thing. But uh, it was just an amazing experience. And then Louis Giglio's message about like the stars and how they are so uh, great and fantastic and, and giant and then how little we are and just as like a high schooler like that was just like such a sucker punch in the gut too like almost like you were nothing on your own but like there's something who created all of this that does care about you and and it was like really just eye-opening for me and I grew up again I grew up in the church for a long time and it was just that was a message that kind of brought me to Christ to, is hearing that you know, uh, that there is love outside of desires of my own wills and, and so on. And yeah. That's awesome. And so that, that's been your journey. And, and uh, then you ended up at Mount Vernon, you ended up uh, meeting your, your uh, bride to be almost mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. And, and, and God has just continued to, to guide your path. Do you sense him still kind of just kind of pushing you and pulling you in different ways? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and it's been, it's been an amazing journey. There's probably a lot of times that I haven't, you know, 
fully lived up to the things that God has uh, directed me to. But like, I, I just feel like he's always calling me back to certain paths. And whenever I am faithful and listening and participating in those, I feel like uh, I, I gain this sense of happiness and joy in doing those kinds of things too. So it's been a really incredible journey for me. Well, I, I, I watch your, your Facebook post and you get to know people on those. So, so you're a, a rock climber. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. a soccer enthusiast. Yeah. You're yeah. a coffee maker. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of weird things that I never thought I would be in, into, and, and it's it's a lot of fun doing a lot of these things right now. I'm missing rock climbing a lot right now. I'm debating on just going and climbing a brick wall if I can. Sometimes but, there's a lot so, of people climbing walls right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, brother, it's I'm glad that you took the time to talk to me, and uh, yeah. uh, you know I'm I'm praying God's blessing on you and as, as somebody a little bit further down the road i'll just tell you god god changes paths on us every once in a while and 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 the trick of it is just paying attention when god says turn and so i know he's got big plans uh, for you and alicia and 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 nora i know he's got a big plan for you guys and i'm excited uh, to be a part of it and to see what god ends up doing in you guys' life and so uh yeah thanks brother and yeah, uh you and uh Anything you want to add? Uh, no, not that I can think of. I mean, I, I, I'm loving the direction that you're taking the church, too. I, I just want to say that out front. I, I listened to your uh, sermon on uh, the Acts 242 passage, and I love the shout out. But I love also what you're doing with things, and I love the direction you're taking things. And I'm so glad to be a part of this church and, and uh, get to hear the things that you're talking about and passionate about and, and doing for the church right now, too. So. Well, I would say this, that uh, you, you and Alicia are an awesome part. Alicia works down with the preschoolers, mm -hmm. and, and you teach a Sunday school class with Brian Nurick. I think you mm -hmm. guys still co-teach that class. And so you guys are so heavily involved. And, and David does. I, I reach out to him and, and get some, uh, some um, advice on some language. Uh, here, let's talk one right now. Well, I'll give you one. You can send me your answer if you don't have it. In Matthew 28, 1 through 10, uh, the angel keeps saying, don't be afraid. You don't have to give me an interpretation now. Now, to me, I, I want to call this. I want to call this sermon. Well, I'll stop being afraid if you stop shaking the earth and making me come to to graveyards in the middle of the night with white shiny angels being there. I'll stop mm -hmm. being afraid. So, so, but uh, look up that the, the fear word there and and tell me what you think, and then you can shoot me a text or an email. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that'll be a fun uh, little thing. Because uh, the thing that I'm thinking about right now is one of my favorite passages in, in Mark. It's uh, the ending of it whenever, you know, it has like the shorter or longer ending. But if you just take it where it doesn't say those things, it just says they ran, they, they left out of fear. Yeah. And it just seems like an odd way to, to say that. But like, I think that, you know, fear for Mark, I don't know how Luke, Matthew would use it. But fear for Mark isn't this fear of God. It's fear of what this, what Jesus' res resurrection means. It means that, like, I have to do something now. I have to go and tell people about this. I have to go live and participate in this. And I think that's the kind of fear that Mark uses that I, that I like a lot. But I'll have to look about how Matthew uses it in, his, in the ending of his gospel. Very well. All right, brother. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go and let you get with the family, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, have a great day. See you, bud.